two officials from the Japanese embassy who relayed the request of the Japanese government to have these four people uh, repatriated and deported from the Philippines. So, uh, but prior to that, we already had uh, a notion of what the problem was all about. And this is the interest of the Japanese media also in these cases, because it involves uh, persons uh, who were running a criminal enterprise in the in Japanese territory in the in the in the Japan in, in Japan in the in Japan itself, and that uh, these people were suspected of being the masterminds of the activity going on in Japan, the illegal activities going on in Japan. So, after looking at the names uh, given to us, uh, we looked at their records. Uh, the Philippine government records of these people because uh, there is a rule that we cannot deport anybody with a pending criminal case in the Philippines. So all of these cases have to be cleared prior to any deportation because there might be rights involved, rights of Filipinos involved or other people involved that, have, that are pending before the courts of law in the Philippines. And these are about criminal cases being filed. And the uh, Upon research, we found out that uh, three of them still have pending cases. Uh, uh, in the cities of Taguig, Pasay, in the province of Maguindanao, in the city of Bacolod. And uh, one had a case in the city of Makati, which was dismissed, and another had a case in the city of Quezon City, which was already dismissed also. Most of the cases, if not all, involved violence against women and children, uh, VAUSI, we call it the VAUSI law. But uh, we are of the impression that these cases were invented or are not real cases. There were contrived cases filed against them just to keep them in the Philippines. Um, and that uh, they just use this law because it is a very, very uh, well-debated law and a very, very popular law among activists. That's why they use the law to file against the Japanese subjects. And uh, one of them was dismissed already uh, in Makati City. Another was dismissed or undergoing... Uh, a hearing for dismissal on Thursday, and uh, some of them are still being validated as we speak by the staff of the Department of Justice so that they will validate the records in the different courts where the, the, the supposed cases are pending. But the end goal here is to deport them to Japan as soon as possible uh, upon the request of the Japanese government. So, you may ask your questions now. Uh, please, uh, there's, there's, there'll be a microphone. Let's send your microphone out then. Uh, we, have, we have microphones here. Uh, for those who may wish to ask questions, please identify yourself from what news uh, outfit you are from and uh, go on to ask your question. Uh, thank you. Okay. Hi, sir. Good morning. I'm Joe. No, see. Okay. Ooh. Sir Anjali Alimari from CNN Philippines. Okay. So I just want to clarify the cases filed against uh, the four Japanese nationals you believe are all just, you know, filed just to uh, make, make their stay here longer and, you know, you want them to be dismissed for them to be... Uh, I, I speak from experience and from the way that uh, things have been running in the country on these cases. There are lawyers who specialize in these cases. And uh, many of them will lose their license if they continue doing this. We will file cases even against the lawyers if they will insist on filing cases which are contrived. But that is the way that, uh, that it works. And we just uh, were able to prove that when we deported two Chinese nationals uh, two weeks ago, we deported two, na Chinese, uh, two nationals from the People's Republic of China who also had contrived cases which were dismissed after we investigated these cases. So this is part of the corruption ring uh, that, that operates within 
the Bureau of Immigration. Uh, all of these legal services being offered by law officers uh, do not stop at uh, tactics which uh, are not supposed to be used in cases like this. But uh, many lawyers think that it's okay to do that, but the Department of Justice does not will not tolerate behavior like this from lawyers. And we will even uh, f file for this barment of lawyers who, who insist on, on using these, uh, these uh, these tactics that will uh, delay the proceedings. We, we, we think that uh, it is just uh, incumbent upon the Philippine government to, to play everything in good faith and that uh, people from the Bureau of Immigration and the Department of Justice should not and uh, should never tolerate any of these tactics that are being used. Uh, I, I know that this has been used for the past, but we will not tolerate that anymore uh, in the years to come because it is not correct to, to tolerate this form of behavior coming from lawyers who contrive cases just to frustrate the ends of justice. Okay, uh, can you pass the microphone, please? Switch under. The case also involves uh, Republic Act, uh, violation of Republic Act 9262 or anti-violence against women. And uh, it is the same modus operandi utilized by many of the lawyers. But uh, there we have an, on good word that the person who filed the case is the girlfriend of the Japanese national who visits him regularly in jail and uh, even uh, plants a kiss on his cheek every time she visits the jail. So uh, you can read from the body language that it is not an, or that it's not an honest to goodness case of violence against women since they still uh, they still uh, exhibit very sweet behavior to each other. So is it safe to say that we can expect the prosecutor to dismiss the case? Hopefully. Hopefully that they will be true to their tasks and dismiss the cases which have been contrived to delay and frustrate the ends of justice. Uh, Secretary, good afternoon. Arisal Saludo from Fuji TV. Sir, um, uh, we were um, given a message by uh, ASEC uh, Miko that you've already been in close contact with the Japanese embassy. And most recently, I think you have communicated, I don't know when, but do you have any um, new developments in, um, in any of the cases? And if not, and also, if there are any um, information on your trip to Japan as well? I will not go to Japan. Definitely, I my task is to stay at home for the for the for the country. I mean, uh, I'm part of the the committee that that, that stays home uh, to to help run the country for the president. Anyway, um, what the developments that uh, we can uh, that are significant on this matter? Well, uh, one one significant. Uh, Well, we're trying to settle the case, uh, to, to finish uh, these cases prior to the president's trip. So this will not be the focus of media when he goes to Japan, because this will be a distraction. So we were trying to, to do our best to, to settle this case, to, to finish uh, the deportation proceedings as soon as possible. Well, uh, there are revelations that uh, came out yesterday. One of them is that uh, these fugitives who were in the detention facility of uh, the Bureau of Immigration, had telephones with them the whole time. It's, it's already validated. They sh uh, we, we, have, uh, we, we, we looked at uh, video recordings of them inside the detention facilities, videotaping themselves, 
and I think uh, even playing it uh, for for public consumption or even in their pages. Um, several uh, telephones have been surrendered by to the by, by the uh, bureau to the to the bureau of the bureau of immigration has confiscated several telephones, and one of the Japanese nationals had six iPhones in his possession. Six iPhones in his possession. And this is a subject of investigation now uh, within the Bureau of Immigration because uh, these cannot be tolerated, uh, these risks of corruption. And the people who are responsible for the behavior of all the people under detention will be dealt with severely uh, once proven that they uh, did not do their jobs in, uh, in ensuring that the the use of communication tools are only tolerated or only used for lawyers and family calls. And that is the one reason allowed by all detention facilities throughout the world. So uh, it is very possible. Uh, yesterday, uh, I think we were able to, do, to, to agree that it was very possible that criminal enterprises were being run from the detention centers through these telephones that they had in possession. Uh, this is what we are trying to look at now. It's a very serious uh, breach of, uh, of uh, discipline within the ranks of the Bureau of Immigration. And uh, this would be dealt with, dealt with uh, very severely. I think that uh, we all know that that should not happen. It's actually a problem that's going on throughout the world right now because of cell phones. Uh, all corrections facilities, all detention facilities, uh, make it a, uh, usually it is a source of corruption uh, throughout the world when people try to get telephones snuck into the detention facilities. And uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, these criminal enterprises may have been run from inside their jail cells. And uh, this will undergo forensic investigation. It's now, uh, the NBI has been directed to look at this, but uh, we have offered it also to the Japanese authorities to also look into the matter. We will cooperate with the Japanese police if they are sent over to look at these telephones so that uh, as evidence of uh, the wrongdoings of the persons who are currently under detention and currently facing deportation proceedings. Hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, Pam from NHK. Sir, uh, clarification lang po. So, they they have uh, cases each. One is already dismissed, then there are three ongoing po. So, ano po yung cases na yun dun sa tatlo? Like, lahat po ba yun ay violence against women and children? Well, one of the dismissed cases was uh, Estafa. Okay. But uh, most of the cases are violence against women and children. Re a violation of Republic Act 9262. So the other three, sir, is all violation against, uh, against women and children. Tama po ba? Yes, these are the cases that are, uh, that, are, that are being used by their lawyers to prevent them from leaving the country. Okay. Sir, uh, clarification po ulit. So uh, only the court has the power to dismiss these cases. Hindi po siya pwede... Uh, if they are still under investigation. Uh, there are two stages uh, in the cases that uh, we're talking about. Some of them might be pending before the prosecutors, and some of them may be pending before the courts. When it's pending before the courts, it is the courts only that can dismiss them. But if it's pending before the prosecutors, the prosecutors can dismiss these cases. Okay. Sir, last question. How will how will the OJ verify po kung real case or not yung mga cases na nakafiles against this people? Well, you look at human experience and logic when these cases are looked upon and examined by the lawyers. Uh, as I said earlier, one of the violence against women was not by one of the cases was filed by a girlfriend of the detainee who regularly visits the jail, plants a kiss on uh, his cheek and uh, behave sweetly uh, to the person who filed, to the person who is supposed to have inflicted injury on the, on, the, on the woman. So we're talking about logic and experience. 
And the, why would the woman wronged and file the case revisiting her boyfriend? I mean, these are juicy details that, uh, that we know uh, prove that uh, human experience is the best way to, uh, the, the way that uh, logic and experience is the best way to determine whether these cases are real cases or contrived cases. Yes, please. Uh, I'm Eto Ishiyama from Mainichi. Um, so um, you mentioned about the a Japanese national who had their six iPhones. Um, is this national, a uh, Japanese national, uh, one of the four Japanese nationals uh, that uh, are requested to be deported? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one is the one that uh, also sought to be deported, the one with six iPhones and in his possession inside the detention facility. And also one more question. Um, according to Japanese police, um, there are three pending cases uh, here uh, against uh, for, uh, three Japanese national who are uh, requested to be deported to Japan. Um, so, uh, what are the cases, um, the, the status of th those cases at this moment? As I said earlier, um, these cases involve uh, Rep Republic Act 9262 or violation of the Violence Against Women and Children Act uh, that uh, punishes the behavior of uh, persons who inflict uh, injury whether psychological or physical, to women and children uh, for various reasons. And uh, most of the cases are really based on, this, on, based on this, except for one case for swindling or estafa, which was dismissed already. And uh, there's another pending case uh, for writ of habeas corpus, but we are not taking this very seriously because this was filed by the, the petitioner in a in a case like this, would be the person under detention. There may be more, but we are looking at these cases if they are already in court or still filed with the prosecutors because we know that this is a modus operandi. It is a a, a ruse done. It is, it is a, a tactic of lawyers to, to stave off deportation. But as I said earlier, these tactics will not be dealt with uh, lightly by the DOJ. We will file cases against lawyers who do not respect the rule of law in our country and who contrive cases just to prevent uh, the ends of justice from, from being met. All in court. Uh, well, they're all in court. Yeah, so but we'll determine whether hearings have been conducted, when the last hearing was conducted, whether people are seriously following it up, the behavior of the prosecution and the, and the defense in these cases, because that's how we find out if cases are just contrived, because they usually these cases sleep a long sleep just to be on the record that there is a case pending, so they will not be deported. Well, I'm really sorry about uh, not knowing who Luffy is because uh, that is the point of interest I know of most of you who are here. But I, I only work on the information given to me by the Japanese embassy. I, never, I didn't ask them the question on who Luffy was, but I'm sure he's one of the four uh, being, uh, uh, being sought for deportation and repatriation to Japan. Sir, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Greeting once again. This is from Nippon TV. Uh, apologies, some questions might be duplicated, but I just want to clarify. 
you talked about uh, well, uh, filming inside and also uh, confiscating a uh, six iPhone. Uh, can do you know when that happens? And uh, I just want to make sure if you know that uh, some of the Japanese media have reported that this morning uh, the BNP and uh, uh, the personnel from BI have went inside to investigate uh, in the uh, facilities. Uh, do you know about this? Well, the the Bureau of Immigration has the plenary power to, to look into the behavior of each and every detainee. So they may check personal effects at any time. The police uh, will seek the cooperation of the Bureau of Immigration if it wants to find out anything within the premises. And so does the NBI, the National Bureau of Investigation, will also coordinate with the Bureau of Immigration in these cases. If there was any search conducted today, I'm not sure. I have not been informed, but uh, I was already given a briefer yesterday about several phones being taken. Only, that was only one case where a person had six phones, but the others also had communication equipment uh, taken from them. Uh, all, all of them had communication equipment confiscated. And one more question, sir. Um, regarding the President Marcos' visit, state visit to Japan, uh, it is expected approximately around 8 of February. So is there a possibility that the deportation process will be expedited? Like, you, will you rush on the case or will you wait on the judge? We will deport who we can deport legally. Um, uh, it's just that really, when the request came yesterday, we were, we were working on limited time. But the, my commitment uh, to everybody is that uh, we will deport who we can deport immediately. Uh, uh, let's say on Thursday, if the case is dismissed, we can, uh, we can already deport that person whose case was dismissed. And uh, today, if uh, one of the requirements is met, we can deport one person already by today or tomorrow. So uh, we expect all of these cases to be solved within uh, the next uh, few weeks, but we will see how many we can uh, deport before the state visit if it will uh, uh, it will need uh, this matter to be cleared so that the attention will not anymore be on these cases. Uh, Joanna Valiano from GT Press. Sir, you said uh, earlier that uh, the details of how you, you were able to identify that these cases are going to be one of the, uh, in the detainees that uh, are between uh, behaving inside the detention center. How are you able to identify the other cases uh, that were uh, supposedly contrived? No, uh, what we're saying here is that uh, the, 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 the cases being contrived is a common practice already among lawyers to prevent the deportation of people subject to deportation. I'm not saying that these cases are contrived, the other cases are contrived. But we, we judge from experience and logic if the behavior of the people uh, involved does not follow what is, what is uh, in the cases that are filed. So the other cases, I do not know if they're contrived, but we are investigating them and we're looking at the, the, the facts of the cases. Um, hopefully we can deport two by the end of this week, but the, the other two... Well, we will see how, how fast we can act on these matters because uh, uh, we will look at the cases pending before the different uh, bodies uh, in the other parts of the country. Sir, um, follow-ups, very well. Um, you, you mentioned a while ago that, uh, for example, one person is, uh, case is dismissed today and then you can actually um, deport them the following day. Is that possible to Japan or are you, will it be separately deported? Or are they going to be deported per group? Well, we will deport on uh, on availability basis. Uh, when once that, uh, uh, because all of them have had their deportation proceedings uh, made already, they are all subject for deportation, save for the cases that are pending. So, one of them may be deported by tomorrow if we get the necessary documentation. Uh, the other may be may be deported by Friday if. Uh, the case is dismissed by Thursday, and the rest we will look at the, the, how the cases uh, pan out. We will have to, to look at how the, 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 the adjudicative bodies will decide 
on the motions filed before them uh, for the dismissal of the cases. So, sir, technically, all of their um, document, uh, deportation documents have already been finished. And, yes. And it's only that um, pending cases that are being um, clear. Uh, cleared. We're trying to clear them. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, thank you very much. I think that... Uh, Sir, wait, meron pa isa. Oh, last question. Okay. okay. Last sir, question. kasi clarify lang namin, di ba sir magkaka-impa kapag nag-pull out ng cases yung mga victims to these people? Are there any attempts from the DOJ to actually talk to the victims to them to just pull out their cases or something like that? No. Um, we we're asking the prosecutors to, to look closely into these cases so that uh, we can make an honest, you know, an honest assessment of what really is... Uh, the matter with these cases. If they're really, if they're real true to life cases or they're just contrived cases. I think we can, we can easily judge from the facts and from the behaviors and from the, from the past record of the cases themselves. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I don't have a name. Uh, uh, I do not want to, I, don't, I do not have a name actually, but we know that there's somebody who has almost cleared the bar and is ready to be deported, subject to the availability of one more document that we are seeking. Uh, we'll rather not uh, speak about it yet. It's not something that we will uh, announce once we are able to deport that person. Okay, thank you very much.